Let's just do that end bit again with the song and with that bit there, because she hasn't actually practised yeah. that. Peyton Community and Sports College, a mixed comprehensive in Torbay, has over 1,600 pupils, a higher number than average of which are entitled to free school meals. Despite being below the national average in 2004, the number of girls on free school meals who attained Level 5 Plus at Key Stage 3 in Maths and English rose by 21% between 2004 and 2006. At 61% in 2006, girls on free school meals were 12% above the national average. The school believes that this consistent progress in the girls is due to a range of replicable measures they have introduced to tackle underachievement. In this programme, you will see five of the most successful tactics staff are using at Key Stage 3. Key Stage 3 has been a priority. First of all, um, we had an Ofsted inspection back in 2003, and uh, it was an area that needed development. But I think more importantly than that, um, what we do realise is that if students are going to be successful at Key Stage 4, they need a really good grounding at Key Stage 3. So we need to develop those skills within our young people, particularly within our girls, to make sure that when they come to take their GCSEs that uh, they are well prepared with the skills of learning um, so that they can engage with those courses. OK, now what... Does... Achievement coordinator and assistant principal Marilyn Newton has been a key player in driving measures to raise achievement in the girls at the school. To this? We're very aware that some of our pupils arrive feeling quite um, deflated that they haven't gone to the grammar schools. Because we do have a lot of pupils who choose not to take the 11 plus, but we have a good number who do and are not accepted. So what is really important for us is that when our pupils arrive, we've got strategies in place to say, you're in the best place you can be. It was through Hope College Insight that we finally decided on the strategies we would look at in the first instance and those are in particular assessment for learning and meeting the needs of individual pupils. So you need to get the ending in as well on there, yeah, somewhere? What's that? There's only a few left. The school believes that one of the key factors in raising achievement in the girls has been the introduction of learning mentors for core subjects at Key Stage 3. Unlike more typical learning mentors, these support staff not only assist pupils that need extra help, but also monitor progress data for these pupils to help identify their weaknesses and the level which they should be achieving. In our opinion, the one thing that could make a difference to our pupils was they would have somebody who knew all the data, who would know their literacy needs and their numeracy needs, would be able to focus on that specific core subject in lessons and support the teaching. It also meant that the pivotal pupils, i.e. our level fours that we want to push into level fives, would feel, I've got somebody looking after me. It took quite a lot of planning, because it's a huge financial investment. Um, and we also had to do some persuading of the LA because they thought we were going to employ another teacher. We took a risk. It was a whole new concept of using support staff. You need to use the scientific terms when you read this back to Miss, OK? In their science lessons, Year 9 pupils work closely with a dedicated learning mentor who helps the girls meet their individual targets. Not really. You need to use prey and predator, All right, OK? So what we do is we have um, a Year 9 exam, then we'd have a mock exam. So then I would analyse those papers and look at the subject areas where their pupils need extra help. So we're looking at children that are, might be a 4C, and my job is then to get them up to a good 5A. I think the thing is, because I've known them so long, that's what really helps because they're used to me being around. They're I'm used to the way they work and they're used to the way I work. I'm the consistency in their science life at school. OK, we can swap over with Lauren. Lauren, do you want to swap with Sarah? I think the girls, in my experience, tend to have more reflective skills. They may want to think more about a task, maybe to work alongside somebody else, maybe to talk to somebody. When a pivotal learning mentor is working with a small group that is all girls, all got girls in it, she can pace the lesson and allow time for discussion, for note taking, for reflection, without actually holding back maybe the whole class. Um, I'd like to welcome you first to the British Army. OK, you are about to join the elite ranks of the British Expeditionary Force. Now, some of our troops have already been deployed to northern France and they got there just in time. They're holding the development of teaching and learning strategies to meet individual pupils' needs is a strong focus at the school. 
In today's history lesson, teacher Sandra Mitchell is using a range of tactics to engage her Year 9 girls in the topic of World War I. Propaganda is quite an abstract concept for them to, to consider, but to do it in an interactive way that's going to appeal to the widest number of students possible. And I'm thinking particularly about the girls' interest in this topic because there is a tendency for a gender split for the, for the issue of the First World War to be of more interest to boys than girls. So what I've got for you to listen to is a tape of real First World War veterans talking about their experiences in the trenches. The trenches were generally up to your knees in liquid mud. And there was only a period from about uh, May on to September when the trenches had a chance of drying out. To generalise a little, the girls tend to be quite interested in the performing arts and they like the opportunity to bring in their creativity into the history lessons. So some of our girls today are very interested in drawing, so the trench diagram will have helped um, them to engage. OK, Kim, does anything surprise you about this? If you were the recipient of this letter on the home front? Most of it's been like taken out. But some things happened to this letter, and most of it has indeed been taken away. The important thing for the girls is we need to provide a structure for them to actually express that knowledge in writing. So we've used the concept of the uh, censored letter in order to provide a framework for them to show their newfound knowledge of life in the trenches. To try to reconstruct the letter as you think it would originally have been. With the letter and the music, it makes you feel like you're actually experiencing it and it's like really it just makes you feel like you're going into war and it makes you experience what they were going through back then. The duck boards have Commended by Ofsted, the nurture group in year seven is seen as a significant intervention at the school in terms of raising girls' achievement. Alright, so everybody else should have plenty of time Working with the learning support faculty, we realised that some of our pupils had a lot of anxieties about moving to this very, very big school. We do have pupils who come in with quite specific social needs. And that's where we started to look at what is the feasibility of teaching a group of pupils on a primary school basis using the culture of primary school. Again, huge financial commitment because we had to have a room, we had to have um, all the right resources, and most importantly, we had to have staff in there. Lauren, would you like to read the narration bit at the very beginning. I'll give you a hand if there's any words that are a bit difficult because this is Shakespeare talking now. Well, I didn't hand a prisoner staggers under the weight of a log. I spend 80% uh, of their timetable or thereabouts with the pupils and that gives them the opportunity to um, become stronger and become more self-confident so by the end of the year they are ready to move into mainstream education and they're happy to do that. I really like it in here because it's like um, it feels quite nice because it is a really big classroom and then you feel a bit more comfortable. I think it's definitely comfortable in this classroom with the same people, so that different people, because we can do some teamwork. I believe that the girls succeed because of the warm atmosphere within the group they're able to relate to that. We've got to constantly look at the changing situation outside of our school. Um, the, the idea of this is that we can't do anything about the issues that go on socially outside of school, uh, but we can do something about it inside. Oh no, what have I just tripped over? Is it a man or a fish? What I think my work has improved a lot because I used not to, I used to look to get a swimming I used to get really stuck but now I'm getting like really really comfortable with my work. Pupils that have come in at the age of eleven, maybe almost twelve years old, with a reading age of about seven, have progressed purely through regular contact, the advantage of being in a smaller group. Um, regular opportunities to read, the fact that we question them so that we know that they're understanding what they're reading, they're not just technically reading words, they actually understand the comprehension is there. Um, and we test them again at the end of the year with a, a reading comprehension test that has proven in many cases to go up by anything by f uh, between three and four years. I think it's very important in a school like this surrounded by selective schools is that we are very careful that our girls do not feel labelled. Um, if anything, um, we encourage them to be very uh, enthusiastic about joining a project. We find parents and pupils um, particularly like 
the 7P7, our special nurture group, because youngsters make huge amounts of progress. What have you done? What have you thought about? The school believes that the Pupil Voice Initiative is also helping to raise female students' confidence and aspiration at the school. Today they're having a training session on how to deliver their own plenary in class. At what points in lessons uh, or outside of lessons do you think teachers actually assess or get an idea of how well you're learning? Okay. How teachers know is like they ask you questions at the beginning of the lesson of what you've learned in the previous lesson and then they ask you like five things you learned in that lesson at the end. We've got a lot of boys and they're very competitive so in enabling the girls in particular to lead plenaries in lessons means they have to start trying to actively participate in lessons. When they stand up in front of their classmates, it's all about confidence, self-esteem. Uh, be productive. OK, what do you mean by that? By, like, don't stop and stand there and just, like, do nothing and keep talking and adapting to other people's ideas. What, like, Excellent. And also, then... just their understanding of their own learning when they, when they get up in front of their peers. Um, Caitlin made a really good demonstration there where she was very aware that there was one table that wasn't participating. Um, and it's working on those skills of going from that awareness to actually making sure that they participate. And I think she's gone on a bit of a journey there where she's learnt that and she's realising that. And that's just going to benefit her all around the school and her learning. I think it's really good because you can adapt on other people's learning <coughs> and you can help others. If people do the plenary, then it helps them learn and like, it raises their education. And what? Well, match the French to the English. You have two minutes to do so. This you would need your whiteboards for. For example, you need to link the number to the letter. It for means example, that they're taking an active role in their lesson, an active role in their learning, it will raise attainment. But more importantly for us as, as teachers as well, they become active carriers of learning so that they can go from maths to English to science. Modelling, you know, good practice, modelling good plenaries. With our catchment, it is important that um, community aspirations, and particularly for girls, that they aim for, uh, you know, highly skilled jobs. Uh, that could perhaps take them on to further qualifications and for these girls today to see them practicing their, their really important skills of public speaking and understanding, you know, being able to learn new things quickly and understanding that learning process should aim to, to raise aspirations. But initiatives to raise girls' achievement at the school don't just take place during lesson time. Girls in Key Stage 3 also take advantage of lunchtime ICT clubs and the hugely popular girls only after school sports club. This year, um, in September, we noticed about a 25 to 30 percent growth in the number of girls that chose GCSE PE, and we think that may have been directly as a result of Girls' Night. These girls are enjoying PE, they're getting a, a good relationship with the female PE teacher, they're staying on after school, and they're realising that these activities can be fun, and they're working together. It attracts the wide range of abilities, and they find it a very safe environment because they come with their friends. They do get the chance to develop the confidence. Well, they might have a little go on the dance mats and then might experience success, and they want to go again. They might even come and try a sport that they start to experience success in. We want to have girls being really driving factors in the decisions that are being made about the college and their learning and their learning environment. The initiatives we put in place, it's through that that I can say, without a doubt, our Key Stage 3 results are continuing to improve.